Okay, guys, are you guys, can you guys see and hear me, please? Are we connected? Happy Easter, guys. Today's a super, super special show. Um, I'm gonna introduce you to our guest today, David Anderson. I'm gonna take a breath. We just actually, David just prayed for us. It was pretty, uh, pretty intense. So we are Easter Sunday, happy Easter. We're already locked up. So if you're in the back, guys, Come on in, say hi. I cannot see your comments on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube Live, but I can see you on the webinar. We may do a little QA after, but I have a feeling we may be going above the hour. Okay, guys, I'm gonna start like this. I'm gonna try and keep a calm tone because there's so much to David, and David's got such a calling. This is going to be quite a different show. Number one, David Anderson was selected to be part of our Branding University Executive Mastermind for good reason. David's like an onion, he's got lots of layers, but we're gonna start here. Um, I hand selected these 10 people. David is number eight coming in. We've got two more to introduce. I worked with David all week, not quite sure what he thought of it we're going to ask him live but i'm not going to steal the show too much we'll take him out he, he, he can hear everything i'm saying here and i'm going to give a little introduction to start with about dave we're going to keep it super short and then we're going to take him out here and we're going to start digging guys because i'm 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 humbled i'm the one who's humbled to be working with david let's start here four kids two grandkids one grandkid on the way. A um, couple of things with David that I'm extremely impressed by. So I'm gonna start with this one. I don't know how much he relates to the topic or subject matter today, but David has been sober and alcohol free for 35 years. This is extremely near and dear to me because I'm uh, on February 14th was my one year anniversary. So. It's a huge deal. I had to throw that in there. Amazing accomplishment. I don't know if we'll get into that, but I had to throw it in there. He's been a pastor since 1999. I have, a, I have a long list, so I'm going to keep it quick. Then we're going to dive in when we bring Dave out. But guys, as I'm going through this, I'm just so, I, I'm so humbled by David's calling. We're gonna get into that probably relatively quick into the interview, but let's start with a little history of David, how he ended up here and everything in the beginning, in the middle, and why he's here in the Coles Notes format. Dave is, uh, he's been a musician all his life, guys. Rock and roll, right? I wore this short shirt for a purpose. He's an award-winning songwriter with over 400 original songs. Um, he's got a, th hey, let's do, let's do a little drop here, a little, little promotional drop. He's got a 13 song CD about to drop. It's alternative Christian rock. I think I got that right. He'll correct me. I know he'll correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong. You guys can go check out his music at redgonewhite.com. Red Gone White, oh, I said that twice because how cool of a brand is that? Red Gone White, it's got it on all social media. It's been doing social media for quite a while, so we'll talk about that throughout the interview. Um, David's built many ministries, teams, organizations over the years. Uh, it all started when his uncle was in Amway and he tried to recruit Dave at 20 years old when David, David wanted nothing to do with that world at the time, and again, I'm not going to do his whole story, but I'll go really quick so you guys stick around because this interview is going to go deep in many areas, if you will. So when Dave got married at 21, he got an Amway startup kit as a wedding gift. For all the people prospecting out there, this may be a good thing to give as a wedding gift because it got David involved in Amway. It led, it led Dave into the world of personal development first because 
for those of you in network marketing, you guys know that network marketing is really kind of a disguise for personal development. That's what it was for me as well. But with Dave's specific team, they were very focused on the personal development aspect. Again, we'll get into that for sure. And that's when he got into personal development. And then he was kind of assigned to that by his team leader, personal development. So he had personal development assignments. So it was more, yeah, it was actually changed his whole mentality and work ethic. And again, I don't want to get too much into it. Let's, let's get going here. When Dave got really into social media and building brands online, it was because he was trying to promote his music. And we're going back, we're gonna, we're gonna go back because I want you guys to know this cat's got experience in this world. We're going back to 2008 when David was trying to promote his music on MySpace. Who remembers MySpace? Those are the days when Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift we're getting noticed online, right? That's how they got picked up and or noticed. And that's what David was trying to do with MySpace. So by doing that, he actually, I don't know if you guys know Jonathan Budd. Jonathan Budd was kind of David's first trainer online. I'm saying a lot, but I'm gonna keep it quick because I'm sure we're gonna dive into all this stuff. That's where he learned blogging back in 2008, guys. David learned blogging, Facebook, attraction marketing from Jonathan Budd, that helped him build. Well, first of all, David's built many ministries. One of the ministries was Momentum. It was a men's ministry and he branded it online with what he learned basically from Jonathan Budd back then. And since then, he's built a website for his band, Red Gone White, and applied all the social media to that. He applied the social media by basically trying to claim that amazing name and must have learned through the process. We'll get into that for sure. Then he built another ministry among many, by the way. This is just two that I'm mentioning because he applied his technical skills to them. It was called Straight Street Outreach, feeding 300 people weekly, guys. <clears throat> Rand did that online with a website and social media at this point. And then in 2016, so from 2008 to 2016, he was getting his feet wet as he's listening to me. He, 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 this guy here that's about to come out is getting his feet wet and all the technical stuff. And, and then I'm getting to where he kind of fell into our labs. We're very fortunate to have him. He joined a network marketing company in 2016 and uh, it was a wellness wellness uh, network marketing company. We'll keep it at that for now. And he applied the personal development model that he had learned from Amway to his team and started rock and roll in that company. He's also in that company as we currently speak. And David, like me, like probably many of you have noticed that a lot of network, if you're in network marketing, for those of you who are not in network marketing, network marketing is like direct sales. It's really sales. <clears throat> you're selling someone else's product, except you're also team building, where your team is selling for you. You get a commission off all of them, so on and so forth. So it's in your best interest to properly train these people. And there's, been, there's a real lack of the personal development aspect in a lot of these companies. They focus on talking to people you know. So they're not really focused on bettering you. They're basically talk to Aunt Sally, talk to Uncle Tom, follow up and keep harassing them over and over again. Who do they know? Who do you know? You guys may or may not know the routine, but it's not really about personal development. So. David started looking online. And David in 2018 found a system called MLSP. I can say this because that's where I started as well. When I was struggling, I started looking online for ways to just basically attract business to me. Uh, yeah, brand myself, use online marketing. And my lead system pro was where I started as well. It's an educational platform where I started and I kind of moved up pretty quick in that 
on that platform. And I became a teacher on the platform. Many of you know this. Many of you may have actually met me there, been introduced to me there, and that's where David found me. So let me see here, because I got to repeat this. When David and I spoke, I wrote this word for word. David said, this guy is on point. I don't know how my impersonation is. This guy is on point. This guy is the future of this marketplace. So I better latch on. Humble brag, he said it, I didn't. And then from there, he contacted me. We started talking on Facebook. Um, let me get a little bit more during the interview of why I know for a fact, why I guarantee, yes, that David is going to be a global name. Now, in August of 2000, last year, 2018, I'm going to keep this short. I'm going to keep this short. But David got a call from God. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm going there. He got a call from God. The calling was to be sent on a global level to build orphanages, build churches, build schools for the impoverished or needy people. Okay, okay. So he is a massive agent from God. And he tells me I also happen to be, so I'm going to go along with that. So Dave, really, he strives to be a servant leader, a resource broker, and his joy is to serve. And I can personally speak on that. That's what Dave is about. So without further ado, Dave, will you please come out? Hey, buddy. How are you doing, brother? I am doing awesome. Yeah? How is that? looking forward to this day, to this hour. This is great. Yeah, how was that intro? Okay, <laughs> it, it was uh, it was typically as short as you normally do them. Yes, it was very good. <laughs> you kept it very brief. I kept it all very things brief. all things considered, what we what we're going to attempt to cover here, you kept it very brief. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, man, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things are well. Yeah, things are, things are on the climb, on the rise. It's a good thing. They sure are. So I'm going to jump in with the first question, and uh, I'm going to give you your rambling time. Fair enough? Okay. All right. Okay, here we go, buddy. How'd you like your week? My week was awesome. I spent quite a bit of, it, uh, quite a bit of that time with you, and we got to gel and learn a little more about each other. And uh, again, I'm looking forward to what lies ahead. Yeah. I'm happy with what's behind me. Uh, no regrets, and we're on solid ground. Amazing. A lot of transformation for you in a short little period of time, eh? That just went by? Yeah, it's all good. Okay, so David Anderson, tell me about yourself and your journey into personal development and online marketing. All right, well, um, basically, personal development, um, I got launched into that. Uh, like you say, I was uh, thrust onto the scene by uh, becoming you know, into the, into the Amway deal. And it was one of my uncles, uh, happened to be my favorite uncle, my favorite cousins, all that mess. So I just, I, I really enjoyed, um, you know, the regular and the weekly fellowship. I'm currently working with that family now in my, in my full-time day job. And so, um, you know, things have kind of come full circle in that respect. Um, they're, they're also in my health and wellness business. So, you know, it all kind of comes around, but I'll say that. Uh, so so your, team, un your uncle is in your business now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So at the time, uh, and I'm sure we'll get into, you know, dating me and all this stuff, but, uh, at the time, let's just say it was very long ago. Um, you know, we're, we are talking, I'll throw it out there. We're talking about 30 years ago, uh, over 30 years ago, uh, is when, when I got involved with this. And so at that time, the team that we were involved in was, was, um, far and away the largest organization within Amway. Okay, and it was and it was that it was so successful because of its um, personal development features that were built into the way they did business, and so um, they they had built within their program um, features like uh, tape of the week, book of the month, 
Um, we, we did, um, you know, monthly regional rallies and we did uh, quarterly, you know, conventions, you know, and annual conventions. Um, and, I, and so I was the kind of guy that, I, you know, if I get involved with something, I'm all in. Okay. And so from the very beginning, you know, I was leading that charge, you know, I made sure that I did all those things. And we've traveled up and down the Eastern board. You know, I've been to Niagara Falls a couple of times out of South Carolina and in between, you know, Texas and so forth. Same thing with my current business. You know, we, I've gone to California, I've gone to Florida, Texas, you know, whatever. I, you know, I go where I need to go to, to, uh, to be educated and to keep growing myself and to be connected to the people that are winning and learning and growing. Um, but I'll say that through that process, um, I learned immediately, you know, the, the, the power and the, um, the significance of reading, okay, of, of putting, you know, putting my mind, you know, in a certain place. Uh, you know, my work ethic had to be a certain, of a certain caliber and a certain level. So all these things were just kind of ingrained in me. Uh, I, was, I was exposed to world caliber leaders, you know, on a regular basis. You know, these people that would come out to, you know, these conventions. It'd be like going uh, to, you know, these things and meeting Darren Hardy right now. Or recently, I, recently I, I met John Maxwell through my current organization. Uh, and, and he was, and actually got involved in his first online marketing um, mentorship program. So he uh, been personally mentored by John Maxwell and his team even recently. Okay. So at that time, um, I remember getting, being, being trained up on a program that I got from Tony Robbins. Again, we're talking 34 or five years ago. Okay. Um, buying a whole, uh, I bought many like multi-pack, like eight, 10 um, cassettes. Okay, back in cassette day, you know, doing the cassettes and the and, and the VCRs and all, all that kind of stuff. You know, you're, on talking all these... to, you're talking Tony, right? No, all kinds of people. Just, you know, like I said, Tony had his package, his program. Then I I went through all that, and um, you know, was power. One, I think it was called Success Masterminds was another one I did. And, okay. Um, um, goal setting. If some other dude that was a pilot, you know, I don't know, just on and on. I was always, always just gobbling it up. And so I, I'm certain that through that time, that five years of, of uh, listening to all the, all the highest level leaders within the, organ, uh, within the organization, speaking on motivation, attitude, um, relational success, you know, problem solving, all those things. I'm, sure, I'm certain that I got well over a thousand hours of training on all those levels. Okay. And also during that time, reading a book a month, you know, dozens and dozens of books, you know, that I've read, you know, from all the great classics to you know, various topics on specific things. So that was like the foundation. So in that time, yeah. that laid a five-year foundation that I've tapped into clearly for the 30 years after that. I've always had no problem just shooting up to the top of whatever organization I was in. I remember going, we didn't even talk about this, Mark, but I remember going um, from a homeless situation. We didn't even talk about that either. <laughs> okay. But anyway, I was, me and my family were homeless for, for a month. We lived in somebody's basement. We didn't get into that. Okay. Um, but coming out of that, um, I, I was a temp at, um, a company that I, that I swore I'd never go to because all my relatives worked there. And I, and I was determined that I wanted nothing to do with that because I, I, I knew that people would assume that any, any, um, any advancement I have would be because, you know, uncle so-and-so works here, whatever. Okay. So I avoided that plague, place like the plague. Okay? That's Amway, right? No. Uh, huh? Was that Amway you avoided? No, no, no. I'm talking about a place to work. Okay. I avoided, oh. I avoided this place to work. Gotcha. Okay. I went in there as a temp. Okay. Um, only because it was in an out it was in an outlet building that was off the main facility. And I was, and I was cool with that cause I figured whatever's going to go over there, no big deal. I got I got fired. Um, like right as I'm coming up on my 90 days, I got fired. Okay. Long story short is I got moved into the main building where I was trying to avoid, but now I'm a temp. Okay. And everything just kind of changed around. And so what I'm telling you is I went from a temp to a full time to a, a lead person to a supervisor in about seven months. Yeah. Okay. But that's the way that's the way it's always flowed with me. Yeah. But it all tap it all roots back to these things. I know people, I know I know ethic, I know how to you know, I know how the world rolls, you know, when it comes to success and advancement. And uh, thank you because you know we've had the same experience. You know, you and I are brand new together and yeah. you know. Praise and, God, he's elevated me. You know, just the way it is. And for the record, guys, this is uh, this is the root of everything. Is this personal development? That, yes. That's like you said. You read a book a month, right? Yeah. I mean, for me, guys, 
When I say I read a book a week, let's be real here. I do scan through them. I go through the table of contents. I pick up the nuggets I want. So I don't always read the full book. But if someone were to ask me, what's the single best thing you can do? It's education. That's it. The rest will kind of, the dots will connect. Yes. Now, just speaking on how Dave is saying, how everything applied, his success in almost all areas yes. applies to this personal development. It applied here as well. Yeah. Guys, I mean, I, I won't get into that too much. I won't, I won't. But the way David got my attention pretty well instantly, we will talk about taking action afterwards, but this cat, his personal development paid off in, first of all, just connecting with me and prov and delivering, guys, delivering. I mean, we'll get into that. We will get into that. When nose to the grind Dave is nose to the grind Dave, I mean, there's stuff that he does. Oh, by the way, the stuff that you do, <laughs> I'm talking about you like you're not here. There's stuff yeah. that you Hello, do. right here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The stuff that Dave does as we were working together where, well, you did say, I will be your best student, and you you actually are. I'm, I'm sorry, everybody else. It's because <laughs> of the personal development, guaranteed. Yeah. Because you were pulling out things that I'm just like, how does he know when to do that? And how does he know how to do that and when to do it in the way that he's doing it? So that's all I want to put in my two cents because it has applied. Guys, the... The BEM, this 10-person mastermind in Branding University for Branding U University 4.0, these are your leaders. And David just got in here after many, over 300 applicants, but more than that, all the students that showed interest but were not ready to make that jump. One of the 10. And he did that. And he, he this guy here, David did that by meeting me less than a year ago since we connected. So very fast, personal development all the way. I'm just throwing it back to you. You know, I had to do it. You know, I had to jump in a couple of times. I have no problem with that. Okay. No, that's great. Uh, so, so uh, from there, um, it forged in me an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I, I'm sure, I'm sure that it's always been there. Okay. Which is why my uncle was so adamant to have me. You know what I mean? And he, he knew me and, you know, he knew, he knew that I got to get this kid. Okay. And if it meant embarrassing himself and giving an Amway kit as a wedding gift, he was going to do whatever it took to get me. Okay. So uh, I'm just saying that I know that it was in my nature already. I didn't know it. I mean, I really, I wasn't thinking that way, but I will say that over the years, I was very entrepreneurial. Um, always, always doing something outside the normal thing. Um, you know, I always had a full-time job. You had to raise my kids. You know, I always had a full-time job. Um, um, I came to my faith right around the same time as that. Maybe, maybe a year or two before that is when I really came into my faith as a Christian. Uh, that's when I started writing songs, was after my faith, actually. And, uh, and so all that was happening at the time. And, and so what I'm saying is um, I needed outlets to explore. I'm a very creative person, you know, a songwriter. I'm, an, I'm a port, pencil portrait artist, you know, all these things. I've always been a creative, artistic kind of person. And, uh, and so I wasn't content just to fill a seat here or whatever. Okay. So I was always trying to find, you know, how I can lead, how I can serve, you know, what I can do, what I can create. I was always trying to bring people together. Okay. So you know, when, whatever, whenever I did a ministry or a concept, it was always about building a team. It was always about bringing people together. Even what I'm doing right now on this global level, we'll talk about that's all about bringing people together. It's all about bringing organizations together, resources together. So um, it, it just, like I said, it set the tone, it laid the foundation for things to come. Okay, so let's get into, uh, we're, we're going to go into your calling, the calling. We're going to, we have to get into that. But first, when you, when you first found MySpace, because yep. it was, it was, this is very interesting because we're going back to 2008, correct? Yeah, 21 years ago. And the purpose of that was to promote. Did Red was Red Gone White the name of your band back then? No, no, no. Uh, that Red Gone White hit the scene, I think, in 20, uh, 2014. Okay. 
So you had, this was for your music, correct? Like that's why you went online to try to expand. Your oh yeah. I had, I had my music. I had my music posted there. Yeah. I had, I think I had a half a dozen songs maybe that you can click and, you know, hear my songs and so forth. Um, okay. I started branding myself then, you know, I had pictures up and I was yeah. telling my story. Um, yeah. Pardon me. I've always, I've always been that guy that would go into, you know, like, like go and open up the back office, like go into settings and I'd make it as thorough as I could. And I always give, I always make everything you just, you know, I want to put as much information out there. I want, I wanted to communicate with people all that I could communicate. It wasn't just a little picture and, you know, like, here's my name. I'm, I was trying to let them know about me. It's amazing. So you were, you fell into branding before it was really, well, way before it was a thing. So yeah. you got, it was Jonathan Budd, correct? That you first saw? Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually did my story because you have a course, right? You yeah. know, um, yeah. the money's in your story, and, and I did exactly that. I went through the whole process, and I wrote my two thousand word, and I wrote my two hundred word, and I, and I videotaped it, and I did the whole thing, and it's out on my, it's out on my blog, all the mess. And and there was this big chapter that I wanted to say. I wanted to get into that whole Jonathan Budd thing. I didn't talk about it in my video because I couldn't remember his name. Okay, okay, so I, I, but I'll say that when, when I saw Bruno's video uh, a few weeks ago, yeah, he mentioned this guy, Jonathan Budd. I'm like, hey, that's the guy. That's the and I guy. looked him up and I, and I remembered. So, what was great about that was, um, he was talking attraction marketing when, when MLSP was just not even born yet, exactly. Okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. And so, um, he was all about lifestyle posts, he's all he was all about free value, you know, yeah. he was all about uh, connecting online, social media. I mean, he was ahead of his time, way ahead of his time. Yeah. And, uh, and so he even had a whole um, uh, branded Facebook group that, you know, that we went yeah. to. Yeah. Um, and he taught me how to, he taught me how to create a, a WordPress blog. I get into HTML, uh, HTML code and all the stuff. And I was creating hyperlinks and all the stuff back then. Yeah. And, and, um, and he had training, he had courses that I bought. And, and um, I felt part of a community. Uh, you know, he, he, had a, he did a great job of building this sense of, you know, we are a team, we're a community, we're somebody, we're a movement. And uh, I really should have locked in and gone, and and uh, something happened. I can't remember why I let it go, but um, but he really got my attention. Okay, and um, you know, even now I, I have nothing bad to say about him or you know, what was done. I just think it was, I think it was great. Everything that he was doing then could hit the scene right now and be relevant. I mean, he was he was spot on. Do you think uh, Do you think you didn't uh, continue because the results were not popping in right away? Could that be? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I, I had, I had my constant contact. I had, you know, I, I, I invested in it. I had, I had things going behind the scenes. Uh, um, I held on to it for quite a while. Um, working full time, having my kids, you know, having a life and doing ministry. Yeah, I, it was hard for me to take that additional piece on top of all that and just really push it. Okay. Yeah. And, and I was always just educating myself. Just, I, I always wanted to know more. Okay. So I think I was just content that I had learned a lot. I had experienced a lot and it was like, yeah. okay, that's, I'll put that under my cap for now. Okay. Yeah. And, and it did, it paid off. So. Yeah. And now you're about to go back under your cap and a lot of these yes. things are going to, they're going to kind of resurface because yeah. the concepts are kind of the same. I don't know if you've ever heard this. I got this from Ed Millett. You're like one, you're just a veil away from success. You just got to lift that veil. Mm. And that's, that's where you are right now, yes. especially where you are at this moment in time, because now you're producing content. Yeah. Now you're getting packageable content created. Yeah. And once you have an, a, a, once your audience grows a certain amount of people every single day and you nurture them, you weren't doing that before, right? Like you didn't have no. a, an audience quota every day of right. new audience members. So now that you're going to connect this all together, Mm -hmm. that's it that that's it and now that you're going to get exposure this is really the path the path you're taking now that you have the you're going to have you're going to have the stage sure. you're building the stage we're all building the stage yeah now you're going to have the stage all of those tools under your cap are going to pay off it's pretty pretty amazing yeah and, and that that and i mean i'll give you a plug i mean now, now that i just I, that i honor I have the best training in the industry right now. Uh, and, I, and I say this all the time, you know, that I have free, what I, what, I, you know, what I say in all my videos is that I have free, cutting edge, industry leading training. And I mean every word of that, okay? And so the fact that I have access to that on, on a regular basis 
and the leadership that not just knows this, but has off the chart results. You know, so you, everything you put your finger to is like <clears throat> just off the charts, you know? And, and so um, you and I talked about this quite a while ago, well before you started doing the team. And I remember saying that, you know, that, that you need people that have, that also have off the chart success. Okay. And so we've talked about that and I want to be that guy. But I, but I know whether it's me or not that, you know, that your stuff is worthy of that and that you're going to raise up people that have the success because it's not just about you. It's about what you're doing. Okay. And you're very good at communicating what you're doing. Thank people you. just need, people just need to do it. They just, you know, and, and that's, and that's all I'm doing. And you know, all I'm doing is I'm getting with the program and, and I, and I literally, you know, you know, you so working with me that you know, I don't change the letter. Okay. No. That I'm, I'm literally doing exactly what Mark Lalone says. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why would I do anything other than that? I mean, that's, some, that's my mind, you know, that, you know, yeah. that you've done so well with it personally and you've done so well communicating it. Why would I want to leave anything out or add anything yeah. to it? I mean, it's so good. You know, that's the training. Yeah. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you very much for that compliment, but here's, yeah. and, and here's the deal. You, uh, another, a plug for Dave here, a plug for Dave. Um, yeah, I'm going to say he's, uh, he he gets the work done. He's a massive he he once again. You're not you're a ma I'm just gonna talk to you. You're a massive action taker, and you also go above and beyond in the questions. You actually ask more and more and more, and you soak every moment mm. you have with someone who's been there. Which yep. at first I was like, well, we know we talked about this, we joked about this. Because you're like, oh, don't go away. I have, I'm not letting you go yet, Malone. I'm not going anywhere. I want to know this. I want to know this. And at first, I'm like, wow, this guy's asking for a lot. But then I'm thinking, I, I, well, at first, I was like, they're, they're, they're excellent questions, actually. And as I'm giving it away, it's like, let me get my notes. And you're just going. Then as I was thinking about it, I'm like, this is the true traits. These are traits of a leader. He's soaking it in, writing it down kind of asking the right, really asking the right questions because you've been plugging in. David has watched every single piece of training, every interview. He knows, Dave even knows what I was saying. We were talking about different opinions. And then he asked me, he goes, are you really part of this or were you just being funny? I'm like, how the heck did you even pick that up? So right. I mean, you are very acute to what's going on. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you're going to be you're going to be an industry leader. There's no doubt about that. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you continue, or maybe I'll just kind of I mean I mean stay in that zone because we're gonna we're yep. gonna go from what you learned. This yep. is important because there is a history here, guys. I don't just pick people because they have great hair. That's not why I do this. Thank God. <laughs> I know. Actually, on a side note, guys, this guy, this cat, he is buff. He is buff. I go, Dave, you're not allowed to go sleeveless on these. And you're also my age. Well, you're over 50. Mm -hmm. This guy is in shape, good looking. <laughs> Where are we going with this? We're I talking, have no idea. We're talking about the hair. We're talking yeah. about the hair. Yeah, yeah. The reason I choose people, I, I, this doesn't even sound right. What I can identify is that the skills that Dave built early on, I want to kind of go through them quick. We went through a couple of them, but specifically because you build ministries, that's something you've been doing. You've done it yep. with many ministries. Guys, I'm talking about building the ministry, not, gra not taking a ministry and branding it and getting it online. Mm -hmm. he, builds min he builds ministries. Now, he has been able to brand. I'd like to just touch on two of them, if that's okay. Can we, can we talk yeah, about Yeah, of course. Because the momentum one, the men's ministry, that's one that you, the, that's kind of like your first application of some of your skills, correct? From Jonathan? Yeah, because I, um, I was working on building that back in maybe 2010-ish, um, 2010, 12. Okay. And uh, so shortly after I, I was learning those things, so I, I understood, yeah. Um, you know, we, we were using Facebook at the time to, to, to brand that. And we, um, and we had other, uh, other communication tools, uh, team building tools that we were using. 
but also I was using, uh, you know, logos and imagery and word, word play. Okay. Um, to, to really get the word out there. And so I, um, I, what I did is I, I chose a mascot, a visual mascot for this momentum thing. And the mascot was a steam engine train. Okay. And so the idea was that, you know, um, I, well, okay. I, I, I was partnering with a guy who was at this church already who had the men's ministry and I'm, and I'm observing this men's ministry for a while. And once in a while they did a hike, once in a while they did a men's breakfast and that was like it. Okay. And so I was praying for more influence. I was, uh, for any of you who are, who are out there, uh, uh, you can note this. Um, I believe it's first Chronicles four, eight and nine. It's, um, it's the Jabez prayer, Jabez. I won't get into all that, but I'll just tell you that uh, the, the, the gist of it is that here's somebody who, who is praying that God would bless him and that God would um, give him more influence. Okay. And so I was going through a Bible study process at this time regarding Jabez and I was asking God for more influence. Um, I really wasn't asking for anything specifically. So out of that process, he gave me this idea called momentum. Okay. And I'm, and, and I've been telling Mark, uh, hopefully he'll agree. I, I basically, I'm a wordsmith. I'm somebody I, I, I love. I was words. just going to jump in. I was, yeah. I was just going to, so I'm, I'm a, I'm a word guy. I'm all about words. Okay. And I just love it. And, um, and so I had this concept of momentum and I saw it. I'm like, wow, okay, this is cool. You know, mo momentum, you know? So I'm talking to this guy saying, you know, Hey, and I want to give it to him. Hey, I have this great idea that, you know, that, you know, that you can use for the men's ministry. Oh, I have a name. And he, he called it, he, he said, it's called velocity. I'm like, you don't have velocity. <laughs> I said, this thing is not going anywhere. You don't have velocity, but you can have momentum. You know, yeah. you can start sto you, know, you can start with nothing and you can build up steam you can go somewhere and over time you can build momentum. This is yeah. good. Okay. He ended up leaving the church uh, to help start another church. And they, and they, and they, and they, they followed it to me and wanted to know if I'd lead it. Well, God had already given me this image. So I came out swinging with my brand. Okay. And so from there, um, um, I, like I said, I built the steam engine thing and I, and I started doing these events called steam. They were just called, they were like men's rallies. And we called it steam to serve, train, educate activate and motivate the men okay and i was actually again with this whole branding thing mascot thing we didn't even talk about this okay but at these at these events what i would do is i would and i have my i have my suit okay but i would dress as a conductor okay a trained conductor right down to yeah. the I had, I had my you know all my pins and i had my fancy conductor hat the whole thing and as the mc of the event of the event i was i was a conductor yeah. and we would have breakout sessions and all the stuff but this mm -hmm. all stemmed out of this idea of momentum. <clears throat> I eventually yeah. left that church, moved on, but I left the ministry there. I went to a regional men's event that's been around for quite a few years, right? Uh, about two years after I left that church. And I'm looking through the brochure about all these ministries that are tied to them, you know, supporting them, whatever. And I noticed momentum there. Okay. I'm like, this is interesting. And it had the same logo just the way I did it. I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. Okay, and so I look back and, and I look into it as, as to when they had started their, uh, their website or their, their page. And of course it was, you know, well after I had branded it. Okay, so it was kind of cool. So it was one, I knew that it would take off. So again, another church altogether started running with momentum that God gave me. It's amazing, Dave, because you have, a, you actually have, there are some things that can be taught and learned and there are some things that are god given for lack right. of better terms right you my friend with the creativity a combination of your creativity your word smithing abilities and the way you pick up on things you have branding in your blood you yes. do the unteachable things you have make sense yes i noticed that big time uh, okay so you applied that to your mo you you were able to create first of all this one thing there's personal branding and there's online marketing online marketing is when you're taking something that's already creatively <clears throat> branded and you're show you're putting it in front of the people that have interest of the thing you have that's online marketing that's marketing in yeah. essence that's why we that's why marketers make so much money they take products of other people's stuff and bring them customers and clients now Personal branding is when you have to get some creativity going in there. Not only are you marketing these things, but you've been, or building the ministries, but you 
you've created the brands creatively. Mm -hmm. So that's that's huge. Okay, let well let's go. <laughs> this could be a long one, Dave. Uh, red gone white. Let's talk about. Well, I was going to say talk about the website for Red Gone White, but let's talk a little bit about Red Gone White. Like how how cool is that name? Okay, so um, on my website, redgonewhite.com, okay, if you, if you go there, you'll see a tab yeah. that says the story behind the name. Okay. Okay, because it's so incredible, right? Yeah. So I've been a Christian for 35 years. I've been a pastor for over 20 years. I've okay. been a maverick and a ministry builder almost all those years. If, um, and I say all this because... If I say to you that I heard the voice of God, I want you to realize that, you know, that I'm not that guy who says, I talked to God this morning, you know, you know, God, you know, I hear, I hear God, you know, God talked to me. I'm telling you that I heard the audible voice of God, but once in my life, even on my caliber, even on the level of leadership that I've poured, you know, that, you know, that my walk that is not a fill a, fill a pew on Sunday morning kind of thing, you know, or check mark that I've gone to church. I'm not that guy. I'm a seven day a week, 24 hour guy. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. even on that level, I'm telling you, I heard the audible voice of God once in my life. Okay. And so what was going on was all those years, 30 more, 30 or more years at the time, it was 30 years of, of writing music and written over 400 songs and, you know, and always, always being feeling uh, passionate that I've got to get these out. Cause every, every time I'd share them, People were like, you know, they were, you know, they would love them. You know, you should. They'd always say you should sing them, okay. And I, and I never felt like I was a singer. I'm, hey, I'm just a songwriter. Mm -hmm. I bucked it. I bucked it for thirty years. <clears throat> and so, um, every time I cry out to God, I, uh, and and I was like, it hurt me. It was physically painful to me that nothing was happening. You know, I had a couple of awards. I had won once in a while, but nothing. The songs weren't getting out there. People weren't hearing them, right? And um, and so. The message was always the same, he, you know, in my spirit, it was always, you know, you just keep doing what you, you know, what you're doing. You just be faithful. You just, you just write, you just do, you just be, you just go. And when I'm on, you know, when I'm ready, you will know it's me. It was always that same response in my spirit. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and so what happened was, um, the long and short of it is that I went out to support a friend at a coffee house. Um, I was, I, I've played at coffee houses over the years. I've made it known that, Hey, I'm a, I'm a local guy. I'm a songwriter. If you, if you need somebody to, uh, to you know, help you get this thing started, if you, if you want somebody to open for somebody or you need an act or whatever, just, you know, you can call me. It's no big deal. I mean, I'll be happy to come out once in a while. Okay. What I didn't know was that he was, I, I was a fan of him and another band. I didn't know that he was in between bands and wanting to do something and wanting to do something original. Okay. So he's like, Oh, okay. And, um, well, he's like, yeah, he will send me some songs. So I'm thinking he wants to send me, wants to hear my song so that, so he'll know what to expect if he brings me up on stage. What was going on, he wanted to hear my song to see if it'd be something that he wants to play, right? So I yeah. went back to the coffee house. He ends up inviting, he was a drummer. He ends up inviting a guitar player and a bass player, okay? And after, the, after that event, you know, he introduces me to them. He says, hey guys, by the way, here's David. And he's going to be playing at the coffee house in five weeks, you know? And he says, um, and I had already asked him if he'd back me up just to throw a beat down the guitar. <laughs> and he agreed. He's like, hey, and I'll be playing with him. You want to join us? Okay. So like, just like that, we had a band. Okay. Cool. And so my thing was, I didn't want to, I was like awestruck. I'm like, wow, oh, these guys want to, they're going to give me their time over the next few weeks and pull in my music. I didn't want it to be David Anderson and friends. Like they were accessories. Yeah. Right? I wanted to honor that evening. So I said about, they didn't even know it, but I said about trying to name us even if it was for a night, all right? And so what it is, I started, looking, I started looking for all these band names and I'm Googling this and doing that and, and every, you know, as creative as I was, because he, he wanted to name, we talked about it a little bit um, as far as like, you know, um, what he wanted to do with music and he wanted something that would be not like recognizable Christian. You know, he, he, wanted, he wanted to be uh, subtle where you can kind of draw people, you know, have your Christian vibe there but let it not be so obvious okay so i was thinking of names like you know lazarus or dead man rising or something stuff like that right yeah okay? and i spent a whole evening researching this yeah. i go to bed i'm all tucked in okay and and um 
my eyes are closed and I, you know, I'm just kind of smiling in, in my spirit. Okay. I wasn't speaking words outwardly um, in my spirit. I'm, I'm cozy now. Okay. <laughs> all right. And, uh, and all of a sudden I, I'm, I'm like chuckling you know, and I'm saying, Oh, silly, you know, basically like silly me, God, you know, you know, thank you for what you've done. You put this band together. You know, here I am trying to name the band. If anybody should, should be naming it, it should be you, Red Gone White. It was like he was cocked and ready, sober. It was, it was almost like he was like irritated. You know, like, about time you bring me into this. Okay, it was a whole different tone. And I'll tell you that in that split second. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you, the voice came? Yes. It wasn't me saying Red Gone. It was like another voice came at me. Like a humming the moment I, the, the moment I said, okay, if anybody should be naming this band, it should be you, Red Gone White. Okay? Okay? And, um, and so also in that split second, uh, it was almost like a screen came down and, I, and I'm lying down, but I'm feeling on my heels. I'm feeling like I got thrust back. Okay. And like, bam, 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 bam. And so many things came at me, scriptures and images and song bites and all kinds of stuff. And it was like a download that happened so fast. Okay. And, uh, and, and suddenly I was, I was so convinced that this is not only an awesome name from a, from a band, but this would be a banner message over my music. And when I shared it with my wife later, she's like, yeah. this is more than that. She's like, this is like four, five years ago. Okay. Yeah. And, and she said at that time, you know, th th uh, this is, this is something much larger than that. And it should, and it should be a global thing. Okay. Yeah. Later on, when we got our call, we remembered that and we named our ministry after that name. Yeah. Let, let, let's jump into the call. Well, let, let's talk about, I'm going to, I'm going to just, repeat what the call is and then would you mind would, would you be comfortable talking about i would love to talk about it yes okay this is a the calling the calling that david got last august to be sent on a global level to build orphanages build churches build schools for the impoverished or needy people that okay. was that was your call yeah. So, so again, again, I've been a pastor, a bi, uh, bi vocational pastor, meaning I've always had a full time job and pastoring churches and raising my kids, you know, and doing business endeavors on the side. Okay. And writing my songs consistently over the years, all those things always happening at the same time for the last 20 years. Um, yep. So that's been going, that's been going on in building ministries like straight street outreach and doing my band and so forth. So okay. While pastoring. Um, so that was going on. Um, so when I say I got the call, it was significant. Okay. It was a powerful thing. So the, the way it happened um, was, um, you know, I, I just, I, I got to back it up to uh, about two weeks before that. Um, doing all these ministries and, and, and being so prolific. Okay. And, and what I was, uh, what I was able to do in my spare time, because my, my day job was like a 10 to 12 hour day job still is like what I'm doing now. All right, so I've, all, I've always only had a little bit of time to deal with it. Yeah. Yet, the, the, yet straight street outreach um, grew over uh, about a three-year period in, in, into you know, a nonprofit organization, a 501c3. We broke, out, we broke away from the, the church sponsorship. We you know, became our own organization that was known, well-known within our community and all that kind of stuff. Built a website for that, that all that. that. That's where you were feeding, uh, what was it? You were feeding uh, 300 yeah. people? Yeah, we, we were feeding them. We, there was a lot to it. We were feeding them. Um, we, were, we were literally on the street, okay? It yeah. wasn't until the very end that we actually brought it indoor, okay? But okay. Um, I'm talking about in, in New Hampshire, in New England, <clears throat> never missing a Friday night all year round on the street for over three years. Amazing. Okay? And so that's how that went. But um, so what I'm saying is that um, when this call came, it was so powerful that it, it – it, all these things that I've ever done, <clears throat> I know I, I look at them now as elementary school. I look at them as, as preparation for, for what's about to happen. And that now I'm being sent to the real deal. I'm now graduated. I'm going to go out and do what I'm really meant to do. And so this call came, at, came to me because um, I got this about two weeks before. Um, I got this, like a switch went off in me. Okay? And, I, and I became doggedly determined to... to transition my income onto the internet. <clears throat> it's because it's like, I've got to get this albatross off me. I've got to get this 40 to 60 hour thing off my chest for me to go out there and be what I'm meant to be for me to, 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 to rise to the level and have the impact I know that I could have 
yeah. if I could ever get rid of this job, you know, that's going to happen. And I had yeah. enough exposure to the internet and to leadership and all these things over the years to know that's where I need to be. Yeah. I just knew it. Okay. Yeah. When somebody very randomly um, introduced me to MLSP, yeah. I finally, I, I knew, I knew I just need to, I just need some leadership. I need some training. I need to know because I knew I could probably figure it out, but I don't have the time or the energy to figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so when I get in there, all of a sudden it's like, it was like, oh, you know, and I just saw all that information that, and I saw a community, yeah. I saw a success uh, track, you know, and I saw that these people know what's going on. And so I just dove into it and I, and I, I got fully immersed in what they're doing. Um, yeah. I immediately, get, I, I immediately got involved with um, uh, one of their mentorship programs there. And I got, so I got specialty focused training on top of that about attraction marketing. Yeah. And it was through their back office that I learned about you, et cetera. Okay, so, so all that found, happened. So you found yeah. me in their back office, right? I did find you in their back office, yeah. Okay, okay cool. and it was just in, it was just in a random training. It wasn't part. It wasn't part of their core stuff that I was doing. Okay, and and I just knew immediately that I had to reach out to you. What was amazing, okay, and, and it's really amazing to me because I know I know that you deal with you know literally thousands of people on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It was amazing to me that I reached out to you on on Messenger, and you immediately replied to me and we mm -hmm. had a decent conversation. You know, it was like, it wasn't like, you know, you know, it was, a, it was a, it was a real connection immediately. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. Uh, I share with you my links, you share with me your links. Yeah. Okay. And, and I learned yeah. about the university. We went from there. Okay. Yeah. Back to the call with the call. That was the stage of a set. So at that time through the specialty training that I was receiving from MLSP, I was learning how to blow up my Facebook. Okay. And, and, and really um, grow my audience. Okay. And in that time frame, in a 30-day window, I went from 1,000 friends over a 10-year period that I developed, you know, without really trying, it's just going to happen, yep. right? Yeah. To, to I added over 2,000 people in 30 days. Okay. Yep. So what happened, God used that to open up the floodgates and connect me around the world. Uh, so people from Africa and India and Pakistan and all, all the kind of stuff yep. now, now yep. entering the scene, yep. right? Okay. So there was this guy from India who we connected immediately. And, he, and he, so over about a three day period, he starts prophesying over me and my wife. Okay. Like I, you can tell when somebody's full of hot air and you can tell when it, yeah. it, like they're speaking to your core. Okay. Yeah. So I, I knew that this was the real deal to the point where also through that training, I had already started um, uh, the miracle morning process. Okay. Where I started my affirmation, such as uh, the one that, that you teach as well. And so in that process, I was already journaling at that time as well. Okay, like I said, when I, when I get involved with something, I go all in. Okay. So I was doing all those things. And so I start to write down these declarations that were coming at me from God. Okay. okay. I stopped writing. These are distinct prophet, distinct prophetic things that were describing what was to lie ahead, um, why I was called and what I was called to. Okay. I stopped writing at around 150 proclamations. Okay. That's okay. how bold and detailed and shocking this call was wow and, uh, and so my wife and i you know we were we were both completely locked in you know usually your wife is there to keep you in check you know what i'm saying okay but yeah. we both understood this was the real deal we both understood that this was life-changing and that you know etc um by the end of that week uh, i won't get into all the details i shared it with you personally but by the end of that week um it became clear to me that i had to leave my job of 12 years cash out my life savings and and jump into this ministry okay um so out of that i had people saying to me you know uh, the word was getting out that i was now a missionary we're going to be a missionary so they're oh that's great so who's sending you what team what organization what church what group i'm like i don't know it's david and robin we're being sent okay <laughs> that's all i knew and uh and so out this of that is, process, this is all based on a call from god yes Okay. Wow. And so out of that Quit process, your job, get everything from one call yes. from time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, out of that process, it became known, it became clear to me that not only am I being sent, first off, I have no idea what I'm really going to do. I have no idea what I'm really supposed to say. Cause a lot of, a lot of people that, uh, that were reaching out to me kept saying, first off, I had about, about for about the first 90 days, I had people literally prophesying over me daily. Okay. Like, like we'd be in regular conversation. They would just like flow into prophecy. Okay. Uh, meaning about this global thing that was going to happen. They, they, they would get into great detail that was always underscoring the original call. Right. So I knew that it was uh, real. It yeah. was just blowing my mind. So yeah. 
but I want to get into this real quick as we wrap up this thought is that um, it became obvious to me that not only do I need to go do this thing, but I need to found the organization that is sending me out there. Okay. Mm-hmm. So along the way, as I'm, as I'm learning about world travel, getting visas, getting a shots, you know, again, nobody's coaching me here. I'm just like, figure this out. Okay. Um, I also built this brand as you observe, you know, you watch it unfold. Okay. Yeah. And um, red gone white global ministries. And I told you it's called global ministries because God revealed to me there's much more to it than that. I can't even get into that right now. That's another whole conversation, but um, basically uh, out of that process, I'll say that th- we got the call in August. I left my uh, employer. I gave all proper notice and had to wait for certain things to come to fruition. Okay. And, uh, and so I was out of there by October and by December, I was in three different countries. Uh, I spent 17 days in Africa and in three different countries and preached 24 times while I was there and, and founded a church and built organizations. And also by that time had built a complete website uh, to support that ministry. Okay, it's pretty, uh, pretty intense stuff. Pretty intense stuff to switch just like that. Now, we're going to get into your segue into the world of Mark Lalonde. <laughs> yep. <laughs> because I am a part of that plan. You know that, right? Uh, I've known that from the beginning, yes. Oh, you're the best. Well, actually, I wrote this down. David is a massive agent from God. That is a fact, guys. I mean, obviously. Oh, hashtag obvi. Apparently I am too. It's pretty cool yeah. because the way you we connected and the way, like you said, I do get, as many of you will as well, get many requests to connect every day. I remember our first couple of conversations. It was pretty, pretty awesome. Pretty amazing connection right, right there and then. Yeah. And I think we started working together pretty well instantly. It was yeah. like a little bit quite a bit and then we uh went through a little journey together and you had to well you had to <laughs> part of your calling you went to all uh, where did you go I, around christmas time you yeah so what to, it was remember I, I i you you offered the coaching option right yeah and so i hired you as a coach yeah okay and i'll say real quickly that i didn't have money remember i i left my i left my employer okay so the money and, thing go on. can you want to say and, that? And, and, yeah and, and so i didn't have money and i'm like i've uh, even before I, man, it's so crazy how God worked with all this. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember, okay. Do you remember when you were doing this real specific procedure to get it done? And remember when I was at yeah. my, my health and wellness co- uh, conference yeah. Okay, and that I was literally going to be in the air at the time. Yeah. Okay? I was going to be flying across the country from, from California to back. Yeah. Right. So just all that kind of stuff, you know, so many things happened that somehow I still made it in there, even though all the odds were against me that, uh, but I still get a hold of you. Yeah. But now the next piece, I had to come up to $97. I didn't have it. Yeah. Okay. And so I got down to the wire. It was the last day. It's like, yeah, I need this. You know, the, the deadline is now. He needs it today. I'm, you know, I'm left home alone. My wife's at work. I'm unemployed and I don't have money. Okay. And I don't have anybody else I can ask. That's yeah. What it was. That's what I remember. Okay. Go on, go on. Okay. Yeah. And so I, all of a sudden I look outside and, and I see this car that I was hoping to fix. It, uh, it was a Toyota Matrix. You know, the transmission was starting to slip a little bit. It needed some work there. I, you know, it was in good shape. I was I was willing to get the training fixed and get the car on the road, right? But I'm like, you know what? Let's do it, okay? And <laughs> and so I got behind the wheel, drove to the nearest salvage yard. Okay, I needed that $97. I also needed one more bill that was screaming at me, okay? I think about like a $50 bill or 35 whatever it was, right? Okay, all I can tell you is that they gave me just enough. I think I had ten dollars in my pocket when I was done. Okay, I had just enough for you. Okay. Oh, uh, and, and just enough for that other bill. And check this out. Wow. Um, so I walked eleven miles home from there, and while and I I I had been on my wow. phone all morning. I'd been on my phone. My battery was already low, and I left. I you know I had I wasn't planning this. So a real sudden thing. So as I'm walking back, it dawns on me, I probably should deal with this. I probably should get that money going through PayPal and all, all that kind of stuff, right? And um, so I, I get it going. Literally 100 yards down the road, my phone died. Boom. Okay? So, I, I mean, I, I just snuck that payment into you just in the nick of time. And then I had spent the next couple hours walking home. I, I, have to, I have to jump in. 
And by the way, guys, do not try. I, I, I'm, not, I'm no longer for sale. I did this test run for 97 bucks. It was an amazing run. $97 to connect with 63 people, actually. Yeah. And, and yeah, this is not happening again. But when David did this, this is crazy, guys. He sold his car. Now, there's a, there's a lesson. There's a lesson within this lesson. He yep. sold his car, walked 11 miles. Like, look at what he went through to come up with $97. What did that not... That ninety seven dollars, that car, you'll be able to thank that car later because oh, that, I, I knew I knew exactly in that moment what that was worth. I, I but, knew that that I need to be connected to you. That's all I knew. I, and I, and, and that that was the catalyst. Well, that that's what made me get to know you, really. Yeah. Yeah. And we spent time together, and that's when the seed was planted. And yeah. here you are here today. I don't know if you know. Do you think this is a big deal? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal. God's going to do a huge thing to this. I have, I, I know that. Yes. Because like we'll look back and we're just going to look back in one year because this yeah. is documented. This yeah. is your initial interview. Easter 2019. I know. I know. What a, like, come on. The odds. Well, you, according to you, this was probably all pre-planned, correct? Yes. Yes. It's crazy. I, I have no doubt. So we will look back in a year as you're bringing in. I don't know. I, am I allowed to talk financials? This is my webinar. As okay. you're bringing in multiple six figures, as you have a crew, as you have your own team of leads, I don't know, maybe seven figures, that's going to be up to you. But according to, according to what I know of you right now, in terms of doing what I say to the T and mm -hmm. your work ethic, mm -hmm. and you're really, you know what it is? Those are important. Uh, maybe I will no because this could be a long one if your coach teaches you something guys and you don't feel like it's the right thing ask yourself this question has your coach done the thing you want to accomplish right. has he been exactly. that down that path right if he has I do things that my coaches hint hint that my current coaches ask me to do and they don't make sense to me I go that can't possibly work but I do them anyways. Right. There was my little drop. So with you, here it is. Dave strives to be a servant leader. That's what's going to, that's the, that's the element that is missing in business. Look at successful business people. Look at successful entrepreneurs. Money first, money first, money first. Doesn't really last. You are a servant leader, or as you like to call it, a resource broker. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that car, that car, that sacrifice you made, that's un unbelievable. Like to me or to anyone, well, well, to me, 97 bucks was like, I'm giving away a certain amount. Come on, guys, who's going to step up? At least yeah. get a little skin in the game. But sometimes I forget that some people just don't have, even if it's only 97 bucks. Sure. So it's amazing what that car did and that sacrifice, because that's a sacrifice. You sold your car to connect with me. Yes. It's crazy. Okay. So, I mean, where does that lead us now? So, as you continue, you, we, we connected. Yeah, you went away, you were saying, because we were on, uh, you had a Yeah, sign. so, uh, you know, I felt bad. Okay, so I got I to gotta tell you, because um, we, we started the coaching process, right? And, and I remember in that first time saying, I'm going to be the easiest person you ever coach. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be, you know, you're zero to hero. I'm telling you all this in our first time together as a coach. I wanted you, I wanted to get on your radar. I wanted you to understand me and, and uh, all this. Right. And so, yeah. and, and so we had, you gave me these assignments and, and I, I knew that I was called to be a missionary. Even at that moment, what I didn't know was that I had to build this whole organization thing. Okay. So in between these two times that we were going to meet, cause I think it was like three or four weeks in between. Yeah. Okay. Man, I, I I built a website, I built a brand, I built a logo thing. I mean, yeah. you know, and yeah. so I'm just going like all in on this and I had nothing left for you. Right. And so I, I remember coming into that, into that next session with my head hung low. Okay. I mean, I really felt bad. I'm like, ah, man, I made all these, I bragged it all up, you know, and look at this, I got nothing. And so I remember you were awesome. Cause you're like, you know, I've been watching, you're doing amazing. Okay. Yeah. And so you built me back up again, but I, I just felt so horrible that I had nothing for you. Okay. So what happened was I literally 
didn't start my online marketing career until 2019. Yeah. However, however. It's been you, rooted. This, this, yeah, it's been yeah. there all along. And what you were doing there that I was keeping an eye on, that was work. <laughs> I mean, that is work that directly applies to what you're doing here. Yeah. So you may not have made these videos or, but then talk about someone making up for lost time, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, geez, this guy, I don't know if it was the guilt kicking in, but this guy just went into overdrive. Cut, cut. I, I, yeah, I touched my first, I, I touched my first video editing software ever. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, the first week of February. Okay. okay. I did my first Facebook live somewhere around the middle of February. Okay. okay? But from that first week of February, the 40 days that followed, I ended up putting 40 branded original content videos on YouTube with branded thumbnail images, okay, and tying them all back to all my other social media. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Is that, guys, important. Mid-February, your first Facebook Live ever. Yes. Within and then from mid February to when did you make those? Well, the first again, the first the first week in February is when I did my first video and and learned how to edit it. Okay. Okay. On your own with re yeah, oh, yeah. resourceful. Yeah, exactly. And then so the following forty days, by the end of my fortieth day, I, I produced my fortieth video on YouTube, again with with uh, with its own branded um, thumbnail image as, as well. And the intro music. Oh yeah, with intros and outros. Yeah, I was hoping you were gonna put uh, a little thing for us here. But uh, so uh, the quick story there was that um, again, I um, I like to go above me on you. Know, you weren't teaching me that, but I just knew I, need, I knew that's something that I wanted Perfect. to do. Yeah. Okay. And and so I wanted to have something that would like lock in emotionally, so you'd remember me. And so uh, um, so uh, I I have a, gra a graphics guy who's done a ton of work for me over the months. You know, with all these logos and stuff. And so I put him to work on that. And, and so we came up with this great little thing that introduced David Anderson, the networking online watchman, et cetera, talking about my website address in the video and, and, and the outro. And he had this really hip music that I was loving. Okay. And I, and I, so I went to post a video on Instagram. At that time, I only had a few, maybe, maybe just a, three or four videos out there. So it wasn't the end of the world when, when they kicked it back and they said, pardon me, they, they said, uh, you, have, you have a copyright issue. So I assumed that he get that he had provided music that was stock that was you know copyright free no big deal. When I reached back to him, he's like, "Yeah, that's probably a problem." Okay, and so so he he knew me enough to know he's a fan of mine as a musician. Yeah. Okay, and and as an artist, we haven't even talked about the artist thing by the way. Okay, um, but anyway, so he was a fan of mine, and he's and he knew he knew because he did the graphics by the way for my CD. Just as I know, look. Yep, We're going to yep. talk about that. I got cool. notes. Um, but anyway, so he, so he did all the graphics for my CD, which is coming out. So he knew full well about my CD. Yeah. So he's like, well, why don't you use some of your own music? Yeah. So um, I thought about it. I really didn't want to. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to have a copyright issue. Okay. And so yeah. I did. And so now on all my, on all my uh, YouTube, uh, in the description portion, I provide a link to my website so you can hear the, if you want to know what you know how to find that music, you'll know how to find it when you go there, and so forth. Okay, yeah. but I'll give you a quick taste of it. It's basically uh, it's called energy pulsing, pulsing through energy pulsing through me, right? And it goes on like that. It's kind of cool. Cool. Maybe you'll do a training on intros and outros. Hey, Maybe, Dave. I just noticed something. We like to talk. Both of us like to talk. That light is bright right now. Yeah, we, both, we both love to talk. Time is flying. I'm going to have to jump into the second question, okay? Yep, I get it. No then problem. We'll, then we'll circle back. Or did you want to, because it's a No, no, no. For, for those that are here for content and so forth, let's give them what they're looking for. So ask the question. Pretty, pretty good segue. Um, mm, no, maybe not quite yet. Tell us about your artistic skills. I want to know about that. Again, God-given thing. Uh, I remember I, um, being in first grade and, and I won an award called, uh, you, know, it was, you know, it was like best artist kind of thing in first grade. Uh, when I graduated from high school, um, you know, you mean, all, you mean drawing art, right? Draw, drawing, yeah. You got anything uh, around I, there or what? I, I, yeah, I, I, I have a couple of things I keep, you know, this is my Dave cave. So I actually Dave keep things cave? on the wall. Yeah, I keep things on the wall. 
but anyway, so I, I um, when I graduated, I was you know, I was like most artistic, you know, in our school. I, I did go to college for fine arts, so I um, I ultimately was okay. trained okay. trained uh, as an artist as well. Um, okay. But what I'll show you um, is something that I drew when I was 17 years old and still in high school. So I'll give you some idea that it was just a natural thing. It, it, like when other when other kids were out. I don't know, skateboarding, whatever they did, and you know, I was home drawing. Okay. Okay. I was always that guy, burning the, you know, burning that candle after hours, doing something productive, always, okay. even as a teenager. Uh, let's see. So back to dating myself. I'll tell you point blank. I turned fifty-five this year. For anybody who's wondering. Okay. Wow, not bad. And, uh, I, thought you were, and I thought you were more like sixty, actually. Yeah. Thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, I, Joan Jett was coming to our area, and I thought that I was going to see her in concert. I was a fan, and I literally, again, opportunistic even then, okay, my idea was that I'm going to draw her so well, okay, and I'm going to work my way to the front of the stage, and I'm going to put it in like a cardboard thing so not, not going to hurt. And my idea was that I'm, I'm going to throw my portrait up on the stage, okay, with all my contact information on it. This is at 17 years old. Okay. okay. I, and my idea was to, was to get discovered as an artist even then. And um, so what happened was I was involved in a, in an, a specialty educational program uh, at that time. Um, and they wouldn't allow me out to go to the concert. So I ended up having to keep the portrait. But anyway, this is, this is Joan Jett. Oh, that is cool. That is cool. Okay. So I drew that at the age of 17. Very cool. You are an artist, my friend. No doubt about that. All right, so um, we can we can go back to what you need to. to I just want to kind of put that out there that people understand. Oh, by the way, if you want to see more portraits like that, or other things that I've done, or quick sketches that I've done, also on redgonewhite.com. Since we've talked about it, yep. um, you can see there's a tab that says David's drawings. So you can go awesome. there. So it's like a lifestyle uh, blog, right? It really is. It just kind of features Beautiful. me and what I do, different ministries I've done. CDM working on things that I believe in. There's actually a blog within the blog. Okay. Um, it, it, uh, there's, so there's a blog feature to that website, which is called Living a Better Story. Okay. And so it's testimonial, testimonials about how people can change their lives or change the, the direction of their life. Okay. That you don't, that you can be in control of, of um, where you are moving forward. Okay. That yeah. no matter what you've been through, that you can author, that you can pen your future. Okay, yeah. then you can live a better story. It's up to you. Yeah, you're kind of washing out there with the light. I see it. Yeah, do you, do you see me? Am I, am I, is the light shining on me bright? Yeah, you, it's definitely washing you out. Yeah. Maybe it's a sign. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's a holy glow. It's, just, it's an aura. That's what I was you. thinking. Yeah, there's this aura about you, Mark. That's, you know, just really amazing. Yeah, yeah there, there actually is. Listen, so your journey thus far led you here today. Yes. Yeah. You think, so you believe all this is part of the plan, right? I do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I. It's too many, too many odd little things have happened. Odd, abnormal. I guess most people would say abnormal. Unusual. Unusual. Things have happened to line this up. Yep. And I'm just gonna say, guys, Dave is going to be a massive voice in the world, a massive world changer with that kind of purpose, that kind of calling. And I am, we are honored to have him on the faculty, if you will, to help yeah. you guys, to serve you guys. Yeah. Because everything, I'm going to try and round this up before we get into sure. some, some advice that you have for the viewers. Okay. But if you round this up, guys, it's kind of interesting because it's like kind of a big loop a big circle. You look at David started by getting success by immersing himself in personal development. Yep. The, the education, the personal development has helped him in every single area of his life. It has, even if it was stored under the cap, as he mentioned. Now, here he finds himself passing on that opportunity for others to learn and guiding them through personal development yep. to personally brand themselves mm -hmm. and to uh, do online marketing. Personally brand themselves, really. I mean, at the end of the day, guys, whatever you have, let's really be real here. 
whether you are in business, mostly in business, but even if you are not, if you just want a bigger voice with what you're doing, the right. key is personal branding yeah. and online marketing. So you find yourself helping people with the single thing that has helped you get to this point, right? Yes. Pretty amazing. Yeah, that, that, that's why I, I'm, I'm excited to be part of Branding University for that reason. And, and, and when, I, when, I, when, I, when I entered the law, online marketing arena, you know, I, I've been around, I've, you know, I, like I said, I've been building, building websites. I've been on social media for many, many years now, obviously. So I've been seeing things. I know what's out there, okay? But nothing drew me, okay? I, I, see, I see success. I see people doing their thing, but nothing was like, you know, wanting me. Okay, when I, when, yeah. I, when I saw what you were doing, I'm like, this is incredible, okay? Yeah, because I was going to ask that. Well, I was going to ask that. Actually, let's, let's touch that now. Out of yep. everything, because you, you're you not a newbie in the online world. We're going back to 2008. Yep. You're, and you've been involved in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So what made you select, because you've been plugged into me and Branding University, immersed into it. Why, yep. why me? Why us? Okay. Uh, because you're right. Okay. Uh, you know, I've, I've done multi-level marketing. Uh, I did Amway twice. I did ACN. I mean, you know, I'll leave off my name for my current one, but basically I've been, I've been around it for a while. Okay. <clears throat> and, and I've also all my, I've done life insurance sales. Uh, I've done uh, outside sales for a plumbing heating company. I've done, um, I just, I spent the last 10, 12 years as, as a sales rep for a fire protection company. You know, I've done sales, 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 you know, my, my life has been about that on many, many levels. Right. And um, which is why I've stayed plugged into personal development over the years, because it's, it's so directly applies to your ability to succeed in that arena. Right. Um, but I go back to the network marketing or the multi-level marketing piece because um, I'm tired of being that guy. OK, I'm tired of being, you know, I, I swore I wouldn't get involved with it again. You know, I, Probably 10 years came and went since my last one before I got involved in this one here. Yeah. Okay. But, um, and so, because I, 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 I don't, I don't want to use up my friends. I don't want to go through my family, all these yeah. things. Okay. And so when I, when I heard what you had to say and when I saw what you were doing, you know, it, it made perfect sense to me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was already drawn to attractive marketing through Jonathan Budd and through MLSP. And, you know, so I already understood the, the power of attraction marketing, you know, uh, in MLSP, I was taking, you know, again, a specialty course on attraction marketing. Yeah. Okay. And that's, yeah. and so all these things are foundational to what I bring to the table coming into your group. Okay. Yeah. Um, but that's what I was seeking. I'm, I wanted to know how can I turn the tide? How can I get it to the point where I can tap into the internet and have people coming to me so that I don't use up my valuable friendships, you know, uh, that I don't uh, turn off my family, that I don't become that guy. You know, yeah. so that was very, very important to me. Relationships yeah. really matter to me. And, yeah. and, and, my, and my respect, you know, how I'm perceived and how I perceive myself really matter to me. Okay. And yeah. so, so all these things came into play when I decided that, you know, the personal branding is where it's at because yeah. um, I want to make, I want to make sure that, uh, that I'm in control of how people perceive me. Okay. Yeah. But, but also that, um, that no matter what I do, if I move here or there, whatever venture, because I've been so prolific over the years, I'm bound to move on. I'm bound to go somewhere. I'm bound to do something else. Yeah. Okay. So that yeah. no matter where I flow, okay, that, that things can stay intact. You know, that was, Absolutely. that was important to me. Absolutely. So with all these options, was it the name Branding University? Was it maybe a free course that caught your attention? I mean, all those things are honestly, you know, like, like we said, it started with you. I mean, I was drawn to you specifically, you know, okay. just, just the way you, your, I don't know, your, your personality, your style, your, uh, your production level, but also your ideas. All those things came into play as to why I reached out to you personally. Once I learned what you were doing, you know, how, you know, mm -hmm. what's going on behind the scenes as you're building your own university, uh, what, where it was going, what you were teaching. Yeah. Again, it all resonated with me. I'm like, okay, this is this is good, okay. Yeah. And, and and like I said, this is cutting edge, and this is industry changing stuff. Yeah. Right? And so so I knew that uh, that I want to be on the front end of this. I don't want to. I don't want to be. Yeah. You know, I I, I want to be driving this. I don't, you know, I I don't want to be running after this thing down, down the road. Yeah. Uh, my production level, just like my diva light, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that's amazing. Thank you, brother. And you are definitely at the right, right place, right time with yeah. where we are going. There is no doubt about that. Um, that's amazing, my friend. So we find ourselves here. I'm going to ask you a question about, <laughs> where is it? Well, I know what it is. It's just, it's about uh, lessons learned. Mo mostly your, your biggest, so far, your biggest industry takeaway so far if you had to choose one one takeaway that you could share with the viewers to me it's action okay. action um action you know um like taking action do, do, doing what you're learning okay okay um, and so <clears throat> um like with your with your courses okay okay uh, it's a great opportunity you 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 you, you give them a topic you know, you give us a topic, um, it's, it's broken down. Your, your, your caliber of teaching is phenomenal. You know, you're very clear, you, you the detail, you don't, you leave no stone on turns. Pardon me. And, um, and so, so somebody can go in and grab whatever course. Okay. And learn some great things. But the key is now that you've learned it, do it. All right. And, and so, and so I found that for me, I quickly, you know, if I learn something and it resonates and it's like, that's really good. You know, I, I, I really like that. You know, I can see how that could benefit me or what, how are we spend that? Do it. Okay. And, and so I'm, I'm just that guy that will do it. Yeah. And, and yeah. I've been doing all the things you look, you know, that, you know, so I've, I've gone through this course, boom, did it. That one yeah. did it. Boom, boom, boom. And I just keep doing it. Yeah. And, and so I think that's the big thing that, you know, that if anybody's trying to, to get somewhere, you've got to do something. You yeah. know, you, you don't get somewhere with, you know, with head knowledge, you get somewhere with applying the head knowledge. Yeah. I've, I've, in fact, I've heard it said that, you know, that um, knowledge, how's it go? Um, knowledge is information. Wisdom is application. Cool. Okay. Cool. And so that kind of thing. So I apply what I learn. And, and, yeah. and uh, so that's, that's the big thing that, uh, that people need to start to do. Uh, stop yeah. being the smartest kid on the block. Yeah. And be and be the be the be willing to fail. Be willing. Be willing to look stupid for a little while. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. Um, you, as long as you're failing forward, as long as you're failing fast, as long yeah. as you're learning and adjusting. Uh, yeah. Can I talk about the uh, ready fire aim real quickly? No, I love it. Okay. And so I actually did a Facebook live on this, and you, know, you can find it on my YouTube channel. Which, by the way, um, uh, I'll, if you're looking for uh, through Brandon University, Mark provides a free blog. I took full advantage of that i've completely branded it i have my own yeah. videos up there and so forth yeah okay which he encourages that okay and um but on there my social media is there but the, you know my blog is david anderson now for networking online watchman okay so if you go to david now.com you'll find me and so through there you'll find my uh, my youtube and so i did this i did this topic um called ready fire aim and i was telling mark that I learned this lesson literally at my very first Amway convention well over 30 years ago. And at this time, at the time, this was one of the highest world motivational speakers at that, uh, of that day speaking to me. And so um, many people know about ready, aim, fire, right? So you get, you get all ready, okay, and you, and you aim, okay, and then you finally fire. Okay? Yeah. But he taught ready, fire, aim. Ready, yeah. fire, aim. For sure. Yeah get out Powerful. there do something and then make the adjustment based upon what you've learned okay so so i learned that all those years ago and i've applied that with every single thing i've done including my global ministry okay yeah. just be willing to get out there and then make the adjustments i went into africa with only a little bit of information you know uh, i had no idea what to expect but because i went i adjusted along the way okay and i learned yeah. quickly and yeah. then, it, and just kind of went from there. It's just, yeah. it's so awesome that if you just get in the game, if you just get active and, and, and be willing to take some simple steps, how much you can learn and the confidence that were built. Absolutely. And also, a, lo a lot of the things that we, uh, that I'm doing, <laughs> like technology and social media and marketing and yep. personal branding, is evolving all the time and yep. that's generally based on 
technologies, <laughs> technology advancements, things evolve and you must evolve too. And in my case, in order to, I can't, I can't, I can't do ready, aim, fire. There's nothing to aim at yet. Um, this is so groundbreaking. Some of the stuff, like right. when, even, even like my flash briefings on. I can't say her name, but the echo. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you guys yeah. know what's going on with me there, but it's it's nothing short of mind blowing. I should wow. do I should do an update on that. My point is, when I released that, mm. that was like. I did. I, I curated from everyone I could, including Gary Vaynerchuk, and I upped the content from what he even had. Like it, that, that one webinar, guys, go in your training vault. It's still I remember advised. that one. Like yeah. that stuff. When I released it, I was like, I was totally ready, fire, aim, and sure enough, I was pretty close to the target. Bit yeah. of adjustment along the way, yeah. but this is what it's all about. Ready, fire, aim is a freaking time machine, folks. Yep. It's a time machine. There's no better fail forward. So that, that, that's it. That, I, would, I would agree with mm -hmm. that being a massive takeaway. And what you're going to find is with my, my, I say my trainings, but let's be real here. It's not always going to be my trainings. It'll be David's trainings. It'll be many of the people in the BEM and those trainings have to go through me, so I have to validate them, and I have to test them, obviously. I don't teach anything that doesn't work for me. Mm. But my point is that even if I've got it working, when you apply training that you've learned, there's, <laughs> you're gonna be doing ready, fire, aim. You're, not, you're never gonna be able to aim perfectly. The only right. way you're gonna get, get your aim right is to just do it. Really, what you did with your 40 videos, but you aimed pretty darn good because the training was so solid, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. But, but, but let, me, let me add to that because yeah. um, in, that, in that same 40-day <clears throat> window, right, like I said, from January, when I used the month of January just to kind of learn. Yeah. I had to get my bearings. That's when I learned about Canva. I learned about, you know, I got some tools under my belt. I got some skills, my some chops up over that month. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then the month of February and March and those two months, okay, during that time um, is when I built my Twitter lead machine. So I, I, I created a hundred, I created a hundred um, branded uh, tweets. Okay. Did the 40 videos in 40 days, wow. did the, my story, including down to the point where I videotaped it and, and added it to my website. Wow. All that happened in 40 in like a 40, well, really the first 90 days in, in the industry. Okay? Wow. Wow. That's crazy. That well, no, that's that is crazy. You are crazy. We're all crazy. The ones who succeed, like for real. That's some massive action. So, thank you for that, guys. Ready, fire, aim. Just take massive action, guys. Ask yourself when you take a training, did you apply the training? Right. Some of the best. Even there's a there's several training vault webinars back there that people have taken action on. And their whole lives have changed. Another good one. Oh, there's so many good ones. Um, yeah. If I had to start over, yeah. that go go check that one. If you guys are feeling like in a rut or you're going in circles or where do I even start? Go in the training vault. You can still pick it up for seven bucks, guys. It's 197 bucks. Didn't want to throw a pitch in there. No, please do. That's awesome. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Contact David Anderson. Let's drop this now. There's a training vault in the back. I'm putting a pitch in. It's how I roll. There's a training vault in the back that is every single training that Branding University has done. You can dig in from audience building, social media strategies, personal branding. Uh, the, everything is back there that we've ever done and everything that we'll continue to come out with. We'll go back there. It's 197 bucks, guys. It's going to go up to 497 because I think we're over 100 trainings now. Yep. And you can get it for seven bucks for the next week. If you want it for seven bucks, how do they get in touch with you, Dave? David Anderson now. Um, my Facebook is David Anderson now. Uh, my okay. YouTube is, and, and uh, my Twitter is ask Dave, uh, um, hashtag, uh, hashtag ask David now. Okay, so David, I'll give you the coupon code. Do you have it? Yep. Okay, so there you go. There's a call to action, guys. And I'm just gonna say, if you're spinning your wheels, there is a training that I say is called, if I had to start over, 
For those of you who don't know who I am or if I've succeeded, check out my story on thewealthytrainer.com. There you go. That's all you need to do. I've done very well in this game and I did a webinar. I think it went almost two hours. If I had to start over from scratch, what would I do? And I put out the six blocks you need to put in place. That webinar has changed a lot of freaking lives, but you got to take action. And it's no longer in the webinar replays. So if you right. want the training vault for seven bucks, this guy right here, okay? David, you up for another question? How's your energy? Of course. Up? Yeah? I, I feel great. Yeah, I'm okay, good. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I, always, I always put it down because the glare. Am I, how, is my complexion okay without the diva light? Yeah, you look great. You look better without the light right now, yeah. Thank you very much. I've got your light shining on me, brother. Okay, yeah. Okay, so... Here it is. I know I asked you for a takeaway and that's kind of advice for this advice as well. But what about if I were to ask you for advice you would give to new people in this business? That's the question right now. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's really the same advice that I did, which is, uh, which is to get involved with Branding University and that changed mm -hmm. my life. That changed my, the direction of my online pursuits. Okay. Uh, as as aggressive and 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 uh, as engaged as I was for all those years, looking, you know, um, getting involved with MLSP, doing this coaching program over there, and doing Jonathan Budd and building websites and blogs and all these things that I do, yeah. it wasn't until Brandon University that it all changed. Yeah. Okay, uh, that uh, that I that I really could dig my teeth in, that I could really have a track to run on, that I could really get solid training uh, at again at my cost, you know, like you know, because I had no money. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, that, that I could afford to do, um, yeah. that I could engage with regularly, that I could share with, you know, because um, like I said, I'm all about wanting to be a resource. Okay, and so uh, I love that you set it up and you make it easy for us to share and give these away, you know, and I know that it's quality stuff that I can give away to my friends and help them out, right? And so um, I would just say that people need to do exactly what you said, which is take advantage, take advantage of, of this vault training because it's like well over 200 trainings at this point in time you know, that are, that are mind blowing. Any one of them, yeah. right. That are only getting better, that are more and more relevant as time moves on. Okay. And, and to become part of a, a, a community you know, that's going to become the a signature within the industry. <laughs> so this, this is an opportunity for anybody that, you know, that's looking to, to find their place. Okay, and, and to become somebody on the internet, I'd say we would be to engage with Brandon University for sure. There you go. I was going to add my two cents. Let me just take a sip. Yeah. But my two cents are pretty simple. Just that. <laughs> this is truth, guys. I mean, I built this thing because I wanted you guys to get free education. I want you guys to get set up properly. And now I have added a layer to what we're doing. In other words, I no longer, I'm, I'm, a re, I'm a recovering addict, guys, by the way. Many things with specifically Superman syndrome. Who's familiar with Superman syndrome? When Hello. I, <laughs> yes, you are. When I try to do everything I want by myself, by myself. Now we have people such as David that can walk you through everything. As a matter of fact, we're this close, maybe, well, no, August. We're going to stick with August. Yep. August is the launch. August 20th. Make note of this, guys. Is the launch of Branding University 4.0. Did you want to that day, that day, Yeah, that day is special, isn't it, Mark? It's very special. <laughs> okay. it is, I, I sense some sarcasm there. Isn't it your birthday? It is. It is. See? I pay attention. How, how do you know? Yeah, you do. You follow me a little too closely. No, I remember, I, no because I was here. I was with you when you launched. Brandon University last time, and you and uh, you made it quite known that it was uh, important to you because it was your birthday. Yeah, and isn't that isn't that interesting how you got your call in August as well? Yes. So like everything's kind of. Yeah, it all came together. It did. Now, guys, if you're starting out, if you're struggling with your business, if you just want to get your voice out there, if you want to build your personal brand and learn how to market <coughs> online, guys. You want free trainings, at least 25 of them. Soon, well, soon, 25 includes webinar replays. If you want 25 free trainings, if you want training every single week, if you want a free, 
affiliate program where you can earn an income. We pay out about 500 people per month right now just by you guys, affiliates, sharing courses, and there is no monthly fee. Right. I'm paying that because it seems people don't seem to believe it. I pay. I paid out 500 people last month, every month now, over 500 now, but 150, 150 of which don't pay a monthly fee, guys. Just put in your PayPal, share That's free That's amazing. Course. Yeah. It's crazy. So, uh, thank you. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. If you want to get mm -hmm. set up with that, if you want a free blog, and if you want that $7 offer, any of those options they talked to you about, contact Dave. That's, that's what I would recommend. Actually, let's keep it simple. If I was, what would I recommend to new people starting out in this business? Contact Dave. There you go. David Anderson now. David Anderson now.com. And your Facebook is clearly, does that go to the Branding University blog? Yeah, it, it'll link back to there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but it's David Anderson now on Facebook. Yeah. And it'll go back to the blog as well. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. That's what they put on Facebook, not .com or .com as well. well no, it's .com. Yeah. If you go to okay. .com, it'll take you to my blog. Okay. And then, they and then the blog will Facebook? take you to all the social media. Okay. Perfect. Well, David, thank you very much. It was you, fun. Was it fun? Did you enjoy yourself? I did enjoy myself. Yes. Yeah. I was going to say, was I too rough on you? But I think you were rough on me. Am I allowed yeah, you to go? You weren't, you weren't rough at all. <laughs> you're, you're probably I, too easy. Am I allowed to go? Huh? Am I allowed to go now? Yes. Yes, you're allowed to go, Mark. Yes. <laughs> not, not quite yet. We're going uh, to run. We're going to roll tape soon. Right in a oh, second here. Awesome. You, you have not seen your final product, Dave. I have not seen it, no. Oh, guys, this is pretty awesome. This is very awesome. We worked on pieces of content over the week. 10 ways to get out of a business rut, super viral content, and David delivered. He was an he, you were an amazing student. You weren't so bad. You know that, David? Gosh. <laughs> so you ready to see yourself? That'd be kind of cool. Well, yeah, just stick around. I'm rolling it right now. I'll stick around. Okay. So right now we can say goodbye to everyone. I want All right. Wish you guys happy Easter and thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm going to roll the tape. All right. Take care, Mark. Hey, thanks for Bye having guys. me. Hey, guys. David Anderson from New Hampshire, USA. Do you ever feel like you're in a business rut and you can't move forward? Well, I'm going to share with you 10 strategies to get out of that business rut instantly. Number one. Try to figure out exactly why you're in a rut. You want to ask yourself the question of why you're in a rut because sometimes it's just not clear. So you actually have to ask. When you ask the question of why you're in a rut, what's causing this rut? Well, kind of magically, the answer comes back to you. It may come back to you immediately. It may take a day. It may take two days. But you have to ask that question to yourself. Let me share with you guys a little story of mine that happened to me just last week. Yeah, just last week, I was frustrated because I couldn't work on my PC. For the life of me, the internet was jammed. Every time I'd get on there, it was just locking up. I couldn't do anything. This went on for days. And I was so frustrated because I couldn't load a page. I couldn't edit. I couldn't copy paste. I just couldn't move. It felt like hours. I just sit there and stare at this thing. And I knew that time was wasting. So I had to ask myself, why am I struggling here? Why am I in this rut? Why can I not perform and not do the simple things that I want to do on my computer? And during those couple of days, I happened to stumble across an article that focused on iPhones. It got my attention because I have an iPhone. And it went into how iPhones like to hog the bandwidth. You got into iCloud and iDrive and those things. So what's happening is that in the background of your phone is trying to shove all of your photos and all of your stuff that you have on the iCloud through your little router. So what I learned was that if I shut down those apps, I had a little bit of help, but for me, it came down to literally shutting off the iPhone while I was on my PC. And then, hey, it's like the cloud lifted, okay? <laughs> and I had what I wanted and I could do business again. It was amazing. Simple solution to what was a big problem to me. It came to me because I asked the question, why am I in this rut? 
and my mind tuned into that article when I saw it at the right time. It was kind of magical. So the next time you're in a business rut, ask the question to yourself of why you're in a rut. And the answer is guaranteed to come to you. Number two, what's your big reason why you're working so hard? What's the why that makes you cry? Why are you doing this? What's going to push you? That's why. That's your why. I'll give you guys a little tip on this. The need to avoid pain is greater than the need to gain pleasure. So when you're thinking of what is your why, why are you building your business? Why are you working so hard? This will get you out of a business rut. However, you should be focusing on how painful it will be if you don't get out of that rut, as opposed to the pleasure you will have if you happen to buy that Ferrari or take that vacation and so forth. The feeling of pain is much more motivating than the feeling of pleasure. So for some of you, it may be your kids or your family, but for myself, my why that makes me cry when I'm feeling in a rut is that I'm driven to have a massive impact on this world. The more people that I can help achieve their goals and their dreams, then the bigger the impact that I will have. So I've partnered with an online educational platform that equips me with the ability to bless people with cutting edge, powerful, and relevant training for free. That's my why. And the pleasure in that for me is that I can leverage my time and resources to bring a lot of good into this world. And the pain is that if I don't get out of this business rut, individual success and overall good in this world will be slowed down or diminished because of me. And that's the why that makes me cry. By the way, I do exaggerate the pain in my own mind. And I think you should do the same. When your why is so big and strong and powerful, you will snap out of that rut like nobody's business. Number three, remember where you came from. Think of your journey so far instead of focusing on the rut that you're in. Think about how far you've come. Let's say it's video, for example, filming yourself, which by the way is one of the biggest fears that anyone can do in our business is content creation. Think back to when you started and how far you've come in a certain area, no matter how small it is. You'll be proud of yourself and of your journey so far. And that will get you out of a business rut. Now, let me share with you an experience of mine that always grounds me back to where I came from. Barely a year ago, I got the burning desire to have a voice and to be a presence and to be a resource to others on the internet. I had no idea what I was gonna offer for value or content at all. But since I've partnered with an online educational platform, I've been amazed at how much I've personally learned as well as the bottomless pit of training available to me to share with others. It has put me in a position to be an online watchman, as I'm always on the lookout to help other people grow their business online. And when I focus on that and how I have changed and grown in that area, I snap out of that rut. So always remember where you came from on your journey. Number four, move change and improve small things. Whether it's moving a picture here or moving a desk there, reorganizing your office, changing up your brand colors, improving your video skills, whether it's picking up a book, reading a chapter, and immediately learning something new, that movement, that change, that improvement will get you out of a rut. For myself, I like to change up who I might listen to on a podcast that day for new perspectives to get ignited. And another thing I like to do to get me mentally out of my rut is when I'm working on websites that I'm building, I found recently to make it more entertaining, I would choose strategic songs to go throughout the site to enhance the emotional experience of the end user. I'll give you an example. On something as simple as a contact page, your name, address, email, etc., I would have the who playing in the background singing, who are you? Who, 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 who? So because I had moved or I had changed or I had improved something, it became exciting to me again. So by moving, changing, or improving small things, you're sure to get out of your rut. Number five, introduce or acquire new things or even new people. 
If you're in a rut, sometimes all you need is something new, maybe like a new gift for yourself. Like in my case, these new Beats headphones. And sometimes what you need is new people, new people to work with, a little bit of recycling, I like to say. For myself, if I'm feeling in a business rut, I like to acquire new people to work with. In my business, I put my energies and my emphasis into pouring into other people. When I see that they are not taking action, I feel frustrated and like I'm in a rut. And guess what? As soon as I put my head down and acquire new people, I'm out of that rut. And I always try to remember that new blood is the lifeblood of any new business. So introducing or acquiring new things or new people is sure to break you out of your rut. Number six, have a holiday or take a break. That is somewhat self-explanatory, but I know a few entrepreneurs who are like myself. Well, we don't do holidays. We're busy grinding and hustling, right? Well, I've got to tell you guys, it actually does serve you to do that. It serves you to take a break, even if you don't think you need one. It's been proven time and time and time again to get people out of a rut. And me, even me, have experienced it firsthand. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I cannot take a week off because my name is David Anderson and I am a workaholic. So taking a full week off will not do it for me. However, I have a little alternative that works for me. I aim to go on at least one night out a week. And that's my break. Even if I don't necessarily want to go, I insist. I wanna stay locked in with my work. I wanna stay nose down, butt up, and keep grinding. But taking that one night out, whether it's with my wife, or with a friend, or on my own, or just a little getaway, breaks that rut for me. So even if you don't feel like you want to, having a holiday, or taking a break, will definitely get you out of a rut. Number seven, goof off. Life is way too serious sometimes, and work is way too serious often, at least for me. But taking what I like to call goof off breaks always gets me out of a rut. When I say goof off, I mean non-work-related goofing off. And I mean for really only a couple of hours, if that. Really anything that you love to do that is non-work-related. For myself, this always, always works. What do I like to do, you ask? I like to play guitar. I'm a singer and songwriter. I've recently completed the recording of a 13 song CD of original music. If you're curious and you want to check it out, you'll find it at David Anderson Songs with a plural.com. But I grab my guitar and I'll jam for 20 or 30 minutes, maybe an hour. And my mind and my attitude awaken. And I most definitely shake any rut that I had when I sat down. I find it relaxing and fun. And to me, it's goofing off. And when you tap into your fun escape or your goof off moment, it is sure to snap you out of your rut. Number eight, find a confidant. What do I mean by confidant? I mean, we always try to think positively. It's what we do, right? But sometimes we have stuff that's just bugging the crap out of us. And I understand that we try to shift those negative thoughts into positive thoughts. However, Sometimes it's just good to let them out. I'm going to rephrase that. Quite often, it's good to let them out. And letting them out to yourself is not as effective as letting them out to a confidant. So in other words, find someone who you trust, who you have the right relationship with, that once in a while, you can let off a little bit of steam or complain with. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, I contacted one of my confidants and we let loose. We got on a Zoom call. And I was able to unload and reset with my friend, my trusted friend who I knew understood me and in whom I trust. And we did this non-publicly, obviously. And once we let it all out to each other, we went back to work. Life is good. We were reset on the issue of the day. And that emotional rut was broken. So when you're in a business rut and you have a lot on your mind and you're feeling the stress, finding a confidant that you can trust who knows you and non-publicly venting to that confidant may be just the thing you need to break your rut.
Number nine, get rid of what drives you nuts. That could be anything. That shirt that every time you grab it, you're reminded of why you never wear it. Maybe there's a stain or a tear in it or that pen lying around that every time you pick it up, it doesn't work. And instead of putting it down and grabbing the next one and having it sitting there waiting for you for the next time, throw it away. But more relevant and important to do sometimes is to actually get rid of people who drive you nuts. Yeah, I said it. I definitely said it. When people drive me nuts, I love to block them. It isn't that I physically enjoy blocking them, maybe a little, but they're gone. And I know a lot of you agree, but aren't willing to say it. A lot of people around you, whether at work or in social media or in different circles, are causing you to be in a constant state of a rut. There are two types of people that I constantly get rid of. Number one are friends on social media that I find extremely annoying. And once I block them, they're gone. And so is the rut that was forming between us. And I get to move forward as usual. The second kind of person that I regularly block are random people on social media as well. If I see people posting negative comments all the time, maybe politics that I don't agree with, maybe just inconsiderate people or insulting people, and I see that in my timeline, well, it begins to occupy space in my head, even if they're not my friends. So once I block them, the problem is gone and I don't have to see them anymore. And the rut, the mental rut is gone and I get to move forward and life is beautiful without them in my life. So get rid of whatever drives you nuts. Yes, including people. And you're sure to snap out of that rut in no time. Number 10, complete your incompletes. This is one of the most powerful strategies that I use to get out of a rut. We all have incomplete things lingering around. I'll get to it. I'll do it later, maybe tomorrow. I'll see what I can do next week about it. When you're in a rut and you step away from your situation and go find an incomplete thing and then finish it, when you come back to that situation, you feel like you've accomplished something something that was lingering and taking energy from you. And it does snap you out of a rut. With myself, I force myself to do weekly content and I have Monday to Sunday to get that content done. So if I'm in a rut with something else, I might break away from that and go deal with my content. It's something that I want to do and need to do anyway. It must be complete before the end of the week. And so I'll wrap it up and put it behind me. And it gives me that sense of accomplishment which takes that burden off of me and I go back to the thing that I was stuck on before. And guess what? I'm snapped out of my rut. I also have educational videos that I've been planning on putting up on my website. When I'm in a rut, I will do a little educational video. It's part of my plan. I want to get it done. And by doing so, I will complete an incomplete. And then I'll go back to my other task. And yes, I have broken that rut. Another big one for me is that every day I'm committed to contacting at least 10 people per day. This is what business is all about. After all, the size of your network determines the size of your net worth. So if I'm in a rut, I'll go ahead and contact those 10 people. I'm going to do it anyway. And once again, completing an incomplete. And then I go back to my other task, and yes, the rut is gone. So by completing an incomplete, you are sure to break out of your rut. So if you guys apply these 10 strategies, you're guaranteed to get out of any business rut. Now, I have over 200 pieces of value available to you for free specifically for home business owners and entrepreneurs that you can access by clicking on the link in the description. David Anderson signing off. Have a great day.